Okay, hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I'm just going to try to do a um, the best I can in uh, not too long of a period of time here. Sorry, I should have done got ready. but I've been sitting here rebuking demons for my computer. The computer uh, internet died. It just shut off. The whole Greenbrier Wi-Fi just off. And I was, I was like... We just got it back on, and I rebuked Satan. Sorry, I'm spitting on my computer. I rebuked Satan in the name of Jesus, and it came right back on. I'm like, there's no way this is not spiritual warfare. Well, then, okay, I go back to pulling up. I wanted to find the Vatican law, okay, that was written out in the 20s, 1920s, that established... Sunday worship as the mark of the Catholic Church. I've seen it before or heard it. I'm not spending any more time on this. I will tell you what I have. The one that uh, Sister Rose sent me, I had seen already. But what I found very interesting when I pulled it up is it has 1.1 thousand views or thumbs up and 111 thumbs downs one 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 I'm like whoa huh <laughs> I couldn't believe it well I took a snapshot of that and a picture of the Pope the two other there was a Jewish man and what looks like Islam over here and I'm going to use that, I believe. I took three different ones. I think I'll use that one. But it shows those numbers. And I'm like, okay, Lord, are you trying to tell me something? Well, we know it's coming. Okay, here's the deal. I'm going to pull up. I'm going to read to you what I've pulled up here on Google. Just doing some searching, looking for the Vatican law. I wanted the wording of it and a link to go with it. But you can pull this up. Under Wikipedia, Sunday, the word Sunday. Um, let's see. All right, first we've got National Sunday Law under Rational Wiki, which is not the same thing as Wikipedia, but let's see, I don't want to lose what I got here, but okay. It's going back and forth. It's okay. It says there is no. Re oh, that's fundraiser. National Sunday law involves a conspiracy theory. Now, listen to how they word it. Which alleges that the United States. <laughs> I've got to move in closer. Let me check my position. All right. It's real little words. All right. The United States government is on the verge of enacting a national blue law that would make Sunday a day of rest and worship. The theory depends on the idea that the Pope is the Antichrist. <laughs> uh, okay, let me just read on. And the mark of the beast is worshipped on Sunday. The mark of the beast is worshipped on Sunday. You see, disinformation, sinister forces, read the Vatican. Ah, I'm clicking on this. This may be what I was looking for. Or it may be just about the Vatican. The world's smallest sovereign state says how long it is. It's the final remnant of the papal states. It is the center of the Roman Catholic Church and currently the world's only Christian theocracy. Also one of six absolute monarchies. Let's see. Let me find out if there's anything about Sunday Law. No. We're going back. 
That's just talking about the Vatican. Okay. Let's see. So it says, it's the theory depends on the idea that the Pope is the Antichrist, which is wrong, and the mark of the beast. He's going to be the false prophet, or is the false prophet, however you want to put it. The mark of the beast is a literal chip that will be injected into your right hand or put into your forehead. Don't let anybody lie to you. Of course, we probably all know that. So this one needs to be shared. Put on your Facebook, whatever, whoever will listen. All right. And it says the mark of the beast is worshipped on Sunday. Sinister forces are conspiring to enact a national Sunday law in the United States, which would be the trigger that unleashes the fulfillment of the prophecies found in... These ads are about to drive me crazy. Okay. Found... Okay, unleash... This is such, such tiny writing. Sinister forces, okay, I said that already, are conspiring to enact a national Sunday law in the United States, which would be the trigger that unleashes the fulfillment of the prophecies found in the biblical books of Daniel and Revelation. In addition, this law would outlaw worshiping on Saturday thus beginning a period of persecution of those who worship on Saturday or the Sabbath. Over here is, is some, there's a square that's in orange, dark orange at the top and bottom and light orange in the middle with a dark orange circle with the triangle and an eyeball. And it says, some dare call it conspiracy what they don't want you to know backward masking Con isn't that where you turn a record backwards and it talks like when Obama was saying thank you Satan or um, yes we can yes we can it was really saying thank you Satan isn't that backward masking anyway never mind about that just another distraction all right, now here's the truth of it all. Well, not the truth of it all, but here's where it started. This idea originated in the 19th century with the Seventh-day Adventism, which regards the Sabbath as Saturday. And some on the fringes of the SDA church have taken a handful of failed congressional bills and papal writings and inflated them into the trigger of the apocalypse. Now, that's not entirely true. I mean, it's not entirely true that it's, it is not a conspiracy theory. It, it really is probably going to happen. Okay, but let me continue. This is quite ironic considering that you would think that opposition to blue laws might come from more secular groups. This has all been set up. SDA, if, if it wasn't for that one thing, I think, and Ellen White, their worship of Ellen White, well, well I mean, she was supposedly a prophetess that gave a lot of prophecy that came to pass. Well, if this denomination was set up by Satan to help set this up, or whatever, then he could have very well have given her prophecies that he knew were going to come to pass because he had every intention of bringing them to pass. Do you see how that works? Okay, now the history. Fears about a national Sunday law date almost to the founding of the SDA church. The great controversy... The L that Ellen G. R White wrote, and even in free America, rulers and legislators, in order to secure public favor, will yield to the popular demand 
for a law enforcing Sunday observance. Okay, for one thing, I'm 64 and we've been observing Sunday as the day of rest since I was born. And since way long before that, she claimed to have foreseen such a thing in 1844. Well, she may have. Like I said, Satan knows the beginning of the Bible from the end of it, and he could have told her every single thing that came to pass. All right, enough about the SDAs. I'm going to go back. What is the meaning of Sunday law? Blue laws, also known as Sunday laws, are laws designed to restrict or ban some or all Sunday activities for religious reasons, particularly to promote the observance of a day of worship or rest. Such as, when I was a child growing up, when I was 13, my friend and I, both Catholic, she would call me up want to go shopping on Sunday and my father would say absolutely not you're not shopping on Sunday until I was about 15 and then he caved all right um, which Pope changed and also when I moved to Alabama I was 21 I would say 21 or very very close to 22 and we found it very odd that we couldn't buy beer on Sunday. <laughs> My husband liked his beer. Not a lot. He was not an alcoholic. Uh, but, but we just found it odd. You know, that was a blue law. In certain counties, you had to drive down here to this county to get, and maybe there were some others, but we were in another county farther north in Alabama, and they had the blue laws where no alcohol was served or sold on Sunday. Okay, that's an example of a blue law. Okay, when was the first Sunday law? Aha! On 7 March 321, Constantine the I, Rome's first Christian emperor, Parentheses, see Constantine the first and Christianity, close parentheses, decreed that Sunday would be observed as the Roman day of rest, excuse me, on the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates and people residing in others, people residing in cities rest. And let all workshops be closed. Okay? Constantine, you know, that emperor that started Catholicism? Okay. So he decided Sunday would be the venerable day of the sun. Now that's taking Wikipedia's word for it. And it very well could be because he was pagan to start with. They worshipped the day of the sun. Okay? However... Um, let me continue. Did the apostles worship on Sunday? People don't know their Bibles. The Lord's Day in Christianity is generally Sunday. The principal day of communal worship. It is observed by most Christians as the weekly memorial of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and that is the truth, who is said in the canonical Gospels to have been witnessed alive from the dead early on the first day of the week. It's mentioned in Revelation chapter 1, verse 10, and I will go there now. I should have had that one pulled up. I did. And when my computer started overheating, I thought maybe if I shut some of these links down, and I thought, I'm just going to hurry up and get something out. I may not have internet, you know, at, later. It's crazy, y'all. 
so glad I'm getting my own service. Okay, go. Man, I'm burning up. Me and Buddy's going to get a bath later. Yeah. So this is it for me for today. I'll try to catch more comments and emails later. Revelation 1.10 I, meaning John, was in the Spirit, with a capital S, on the Lord's Day, and heard behind me in heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet now when you go to tools and you go down to the Lord's come on computer alright it's G2960 it's pronounced Kuriakas. Strong's G2960 Kuriakas Kuriakas. Kuriakas. Alright. And go scrolling down. Lords. It means lords. Belonging to the Lord or related to the Lord. And. Belonging to the Lord. Parentheses. Jehovah or Jesus. The Lord's. Under Thayer's Greek lexicon, number two, relating to the Lord, the day devoted to the Lord, sacred to the memory of Christ's resurrection, Revelation 1.10. That's where it's used. However, there are other places. Let's go to this one. 1 Corinthians 11.20. This is Paul speaking to the church in Corinth. When ye come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. Okay, that's not what I was looking for. Um, that's to have communion. He had told them, when you come together, on the first, he said, come together on the first day of the week and take up a collection for the poor so that when I get there, I don't have, we don't have to waste time doing it then. So that says to us, uh, he had every intention of preaching on the first day of the week. These were Gentiles or converted Jews. They were not taught to keep the Sabbath. If you study the New Testament carefully, nowhere does it say that Gentiles were taught to keep the Sabbath. You sure can if you want to, but you don't have to. They met on the first day of the week. The Lord's Day started way back then when the church was called the way before they ever started even calling it Christianity Constantine doesn't get to take credit and neither does any Pope for making the day of meeting church day you could say or the day of rest Sunday they were not taught that they had to rest from Friday sundown to Saturday sundown this is legalistic Christians that want to follow the Old Testament to the letter of the law and the SDA church. We all have the freedom to keep one day as, as special and holy, whatever day it is, or keep every day alike. I keep every day alike. Every day is holy to me. Every day I try to put out a video or two, sometimes five, okay? It just depends on what people send me and what the Holy Spirit leads and what I feel is important to share. Or if I can't, then I do other things, read my Bible, listen to music, and uh, sing and do things around my home. 
to keep it clean and lovely. So, you know, it's just not right to say the Pope, yes, he's trying. Back in the night, this is what I wanted to find, was that law that showed he signed into law the mark of the Catholic Church. It was back in 1928. Okay, um, this video now... Okay, now let me go to this video that I showed you had the numbers 1.1 1 .1 and 111. The coming National Sunday Law. Now, in the first, oh, I don't know, three, four, three minutes, I'd say. No, not even that long. Okay, there's a picture of the statue of Constantine. That's at 2 minutes, 36 seconds. So for that many minutes, it's just one article going, and I had to keep pausing to try to read it. And I thought, if this whole video is just one second clips of articles, I this is going to take me three hours to get through it. Well, after, you know, while wow, 2.36, then it becomes, let me see if this is where the talking begins. Uh, yeah, that's where the actual... Action be begin in a work, work, work world. What difference will one day make? The earth won't alter its course. Cats and dogs will be. Cats and dogs. It sounds so sweet. Rain will still fall from the sky. So take time for Sunday. Take time for Sunday. Just know that your truck has a little thing for Monday. We gotta get the, this story on a Sunday morning. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that's like a truck commercial. Okay, at any rate, um, going back, let me blow this up. I just want to read to you the titles of some of these things. Starts off with a content disclaimer because they use so many articles. It's sweeping the nations. Um... Religions will conform. Sunday laws aren't about Christianity. They're about economics. And if you can pause this and read it, you can. Uh, it's very small writing. Now there's one from the Catholic News Service. And it's a title called Sunday has lost its sense of... Uh, as a day of rest, renewal in Christ, Pope says. The new, the next one says the new Italian government proposes a ban on Sunday shopping, and it shows a big mall here and folks in it. This one says, let me go a little further. Oops, I missed it. Hungarian lawmakers ban Sunday shopping. To boost family togetherness. And there's a great big, I guess that is a Christmas tree. Kind of ugly if you ask me, but that's what it is. Um, how Europeans are fighting back against Sunday trading. It, yeah, in Germany it's already a law. They did concede to be open 10 Sundays a year, including the four during Advent before Christmas. I learned that. Israeli, now here's one that shocked me. Israeli proposal to make Sunday day of rest may benefit retail. Yeah, I can read this one. Israel's government, this was put out July the 5th, 
2011. Yeah, this is in the works. Israel's government is examining a proposal to shift the weekend to the Western Saturday and Sunday. A step that may benefit financial markets and retail and leisure companies. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu this week appointed Eugene Candle, or Candel, probably, head of the National Economic Council to look into the implications of changing the weekend from Friday and Saturday. See, it's like Friday night to Saturday sundown, Friday sundown, Saturday sundown, or I have heard some of them say it's 6 p.m. to 6 p.m., whatever. This is, oh, by Bloomberg, of course. That's a Jewish uh, retail business, isn't it? Someone looked that up. Isn't Bloomberg Jewish? Um, all right, where was I? The proposal would make Friday a half day of work. Many in Israel use Friday to prepare for the Jewish Shabbat which begins at sundown. Working and traveling is forbidden on the Shabbat, according, or Sabbath, according to Jewish law. And most stores and many restaurants are closed for the Sabbath. The main creator of jobs in Israel today is not the manufacturing sector, but trade and services, says Uriel Lynn president of the Israeli Chambers of Commerce. If Sunday is full holiday when people can go out with their families to shop and enjoy themselves, it will create more jobs in trade and services. And that's as far as I can read. Because it skips to the next one. Returning to the Bible, Poland reclaims Sunday as a day of rest. See, and that's not unbiblical, because that is when the new church, the way, started meeting. Keeping Sundays as a day of rest is not just about religion. Okay, that's another article. You can't read that much of it. This one says... Slow Sunday, the simple solution to, now here it is, global warming. Senator, this is a picture of a senator. Church attendance should be mandatory. <laughs> Spending Sunday in a cinema is not God's way, protests protests after Scottish Island shows film for the first time during Sabbath. So apparently, this was in 2018. The, the Daily Record. There's an older man holding a sign saying, Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. And another lady saying, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. <sighs> Spending Sunday was, is their day of rest. And Jesus is fine with that. <laughs> I made that clear. Keeping Sunday special has priceless value. Alright, I'm not going to read any more. There's just a few more and then you can just watch it. Okay, there's many things covered, but a lot of it has to do with global warming. They think if everything shuts down one day a week, we won't have, you know, that's going to be one of their excuses. One of their good excuses for enacting this law is about that. But it's all about fooling the masses into believing that this is the mark of the beast. Don't be fooled. It is not the mark of the beast. It's okay for you to keep Sunday 
as your Sabbath. Don't worry about it if you're left behind. Just do it if you want. Don't break the law. Don't go to jail over that. Don't take the mark of the beast, which is going to be injected into your right hand right here. See the web right here. And I can, I've done videos on that. I can do a video on the real mark of the beast. If somebody wants me to, leave it in the comments and I will be happy to do that. And with that, I say I plead the blood of Jesus over this video and the internet connection. And over each and every one of you as well. And I'm glad I made it all the way through. And I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.